In this demo, we're going to use the dry sand pack from the Digital Rocks portal to look at some segmentation tools. We're going to use the watershed transform and the distance map to do some grain separation. So what we'll do first is we'll turn to the segment tab and there we find the ROI tools. Here you'll find tools uh, for thresholding, for example. So we could uh, threshold to try and find the right intensity that's, that identifies the grains. Uh, if I click reset, you'll also notice there's a button for upper Otsu. This will allow you to automatically segment based on the threshold of the entire image channel. Now in this case, the image also has some pixels uh, from some core liner or some maybe a Kapton tube that the sand grains were inside. So that could bias the histogram. I'm going to reset. I want to show you another way of separating based on the histogram. Now what I'll do in this case is I'll create a new region of interest and I'll just call this subvolume. And I'll give it a, a color. And what I'll do in this case is I will use the ROI painter to, uh, to turn on, I'll select a 2D image. In 3D mode, I'll turn on a paintbrush with a square. And if I hold down the control key on my keyboard and I use the mouse wheel, I can make my brush bigger or smaller. Here, as I hold down control and drag, I paint. If I hold down shift and drag, I erase. Now I'm using a 3D paintbrush, which means if I use the mouse wheel, without control. If I use the mouse wheel to scroll up or down, I scroll through, you can see I've painted multiple slices because it's a 3D paintbrush. In fact, if I come over and I select a subvolume, uh, I can see in its property panels, I can choose to modify the 3D rendering and you can see if I drag this, you can see exactly the pixels I've painted. So uh, now we see uh, what's painted in this particular region of interest. The reason I painted this region of interest is with this subvolume selected, I could come over here on ROI tools and at the bottom, I can ask Dragonfly to look at this ROI and look at the image which has been sharpened and then smoothed and apply a split at Otsu. What this does is it looks at the histogram of just the segmented pixels and then provides an optimal threshold. So in this case, we can see that we have the background, which would be the pore space, and we have the foreground, which is the grains. So you can see the grains that are segmented. Now, this was done by manually painting an area with the paintbrush. What we would like to do is have the entire cylinder, except for the edge of the core liner or the edge of the capped on tube, we'd like to have the entire cylinder painted. So I'm gonna show you how to do that quickly. I'm going to uh, shift to select all three ROIs and delete. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new ROI and I'm gonna call it cylinder. Now, um, what I would like to do next is go back to the main tab and use on the shapes panel a cylinder tool. I can click cylinder and I can turn on the cylinder and what I'll do is I'll grab one vertex of the cylinder and drag it to the top middle of the screen and grab the other vertex and drag it to the bottom middle of this panel. And now if I come over here, I can double click to go full screen. I can adjust the radius of my cylinder and, uh, and I can be sure to include an area that excludes the area at high radius that includes that part of the capped on tube. So you can see the footprint of the cylinder in the 2D view. If I look closely here, I see that it's including a little bit of the capped on tube, so I'll reduce the radius. That looks fine. Now what I can do is with this cylinder, which is a shape, I can use this to paint my cylinder, which is an ROI. So I can right click here and say, add to ROI. Which ROI? It, it prompts you, you can choose the cylinder. Now I'll turn off this shape and you see that I have painted all of these pixels green. So we can do just what we did before with the subvolume, but now we'll do it with the cylinder and we'll choose uh, to choose this image and split at O2. Now the result, uh, unfortunately these are the same color, but I can just click once to uh, change the color. And uh, I'm gonna turn off the visibility of the cylinder ROI. Let's double click to go full screen. So here's the background and here's the foreground. So those are my, my grains. Now, what I would like to do next, let's actually go ahead and label these. So these are the grains, I'll just double click and type. And this is the pore space. 
And you see both of those are restricted by the cylinder. Okay, um, now what I'll do next is I would like to separate these grains and the first step in doing that is I'm going to use the pore space ROI and I'm going to create a distance map. That is, I want a distance map of how far is every pixel from the pore space. I can right click on pore space and ask for create mapping of and choose a distance map. So this creates a distance map and uh, if we want to look at it we can see and I can uh, increase the brightness. So you can see we have a distance map. Now uh, for this sort of operation where we would like to perform a watershed on the distance map, we actually need to invert the distance map. So I'll right click the distance map and I'll choose modify and transform invert. This gives me the dataset tools panel in which case I'll choose invert values and I'll deselect create a new dataset. The result is now the image is inverted. I'll go back to the main tab. So we have our grains ROI, we have our pore space ROI, and we also have this uh, inverted distance map. On the inverted distance map, now I will choose a threshold range that will, uh, let me click reset, that will help me identify the seeds uh, or the markers that I intend to use for the watershed. So what I would like to do here is pick some intensity of ranges that gives me uh, the cores of each grain but doesn't connect the grains otherwise they won't be separated. So uh, let's choose a value right around here we can see good separation and now what we can do is we can add this thresholded range to a new ROI and I'll call this new ROI my markers for the watershed. Now at this point it's a binary region of interest and it is, uh, and we need to do a connected components so that we can use it for a watershed seed or use it for the markers of a watershed. Now I can right click on markers and I can ask for connected components, six connected, and it will return, uh, let me turn off the visibility of this and this and this. So now the only thing that's showing is the uh, the raw image channel or we could turn on and show the filtered image channel and now when I turn on markers you can see where the markers are now in this case we see that we've actually have all of these grains that were connected based on my binary image so I thresholded here but what I should do is use the cylinder to to mask this markers ROI so I can simply uh, take this cylinder you see its footprint here I can right click on the cylinder and say mask ROI and I choose it to mask the markers. Click OK and now all of these are removed. So I will delete this multi ROI and I will repeat the operation now that it's been masked. So I'll do connected components uh, new multi ROI 6 connected. Now if I look here, here are the markers for my watershed separation. So what I can do now is uh, I will right click on markers and ask for a watershed transform. Now the watershed transform requires uh, uh, two mandatory inputs and one optional input. The first mandatory input is the markers for the watershed which is how which is what I right clicked to initiate. The second input is a landscape function in this case we want to use the inverted distance map. The third operation or the third option is a mask that you may wish to use so basically we can say the watershed does not need to expand out beyond what I currently label as grains. So I'm going to choose grains and click OK. So this means the watershed won't expand out here into the extra space or even into the pore space. The watershed is only going to recapture the pixels that we already identified as grains in the initial uh, OTSU thresholding. So it's quite nice to restrict your watershed expansion to a predefined ROI. I'll turn it on in just a minute after this operation is done so you can see. So we had the markers and we used this as a mask so do not proceed with the watershed beyond this mask. So that keeps us from evaluating the watershed out here in these in these pixels or out here. And as a result uh, we have this. So this is the watershed separated grains 
And in another video, we could choose to look at how you do objects analysis or characterize the grains um, uh, that we've separated and identified in this, in this example. All right, uh, good luck and thank you for your attention.